As the 70s roll in, stability around the world has never been as shaky. Interplanetary alliances join together to seek ideological supremacy across both planets. Cultural shifts are uprooting norms that have been in place for centuries. Technological shifts have been changing how the world itself functions. As these shifts occur, life continues in the seed bearer region, where a seemingly random group of people have come together to try and make sense of the nonsensical. This is Hazeltown Story. Hello, I'm Bob Nader. I am playing Ferris T. Tarot. Pronouns he, him. He is a TV host for a wildlife and a society show called Whole Wild World. It's not super popular yet, but he's trying to work on that. And that should be it. Hi, I'm Carnival. I'll be playing Elvis Graner. Pronouns she, they. An engineering student who has in adv- who has made a surveillance network by accident. I am, of course, Deathmaster780. I will be playing Bob B. Pronouns he, him. He's a local businessman who gets into some shady shit, maybe. And also, I'll be playing uh, Saskia, a dead soul trapped in a stone. Pronouns she, her. Rock spirit. I'm Torpetypus, and I'm here to Hazeltown contact these nuts, and I'll be playing Aravia, she, her, in Immortal so Dumbass. after the last events of you finding the floppy disk and also... Uh, your encounter at uh, Lucky's Tavern. Uh, you all, it is a new day. Uh, you all go ahead and um, reconvene at the office. Uh, you are now in possession of the floppy disk, and whoever wants to be there can be there. Oh, wait. Do we have to do like downtime first? Um, yes. Because uh, this would be after. This would know, be a new day, thing. right? Yeah, it's a new day, so you all get two. So let's go ahead and start this off. Um, Ferris, uh, you get two downtime actions. What do you do? Let me think here. Can anyone give me suggestion here? Anything that can be useful for us? You still have the uh, Constellation documentary research that you right. were I think me... that, that finished, though, because I, I just noticed that that's not there, so that finished. Okay, so I don't need that is else, there. But... Wait, the clock that is there, that's a uh, caramel. That's oh. uh, that's Claudia's. Let me train then. Training's always good. Yep. Training is always like probably one of the better things to do. It's Unless been you a have bit, like, like a specific thing. Training gives you like one XP towards a thing, right? Towards category. So uh, you can either. So when you take one training action, you can put it towards either either of your uh, archetypes or you can put it into a skill. I'll do, I'll do skills. Uh, and because you have two, you can put it in two. Okay, so just increase the skill, not the XP, right? Uh, you increase the XP by one, or by however many, so that you, yeah, don't actually increase the, the things, so. Uh, I guess one for intellect, one for charisma, then. So you're going to do one for intellect and one for charisma? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, at that point, um... You have hit five XP for charisma, which means that you can put in a point towards either charm, intimidate, or deceive. Oh, uh, let's do deceive. All right. Did you just put that, or was that there? No, I didn't touch it. Okay. So there. So now this goes up to five. So your charisma is now five XP, and your influx now six. All right. So I'm done then, right? Yep. All right. Uh, Carnival. Uh, First things first, so we're going to just finish up whatever project that is. All right, so you're signing all the regulars. Uh, Yes. Actually, I don't even know if just do the action because you're at one pip, which means that you're going to get it anyway. Yes, exactly. Uh, So uh, if I remember the correctly, because this has been going on for a while, if I uh, remember this basically now you... So what you were doing was as Claudio was it was Claudio, right? That was doing this. Yes. Okay. So you are were amassing a number of people because you have started to work more in terms of trying to find things out about underground uh, crime networks. Uh, you have been trying to scrounge up enough people that hey, if we need to go go talk about. Uh, anyone or try and figure out something about an underground network uh, that you would have in particular, I believe it was financial 
Yeah, financial like, or, well, financials, securities, or gang. But so the majority this, is for f- the the first focus at this point in time is primarily looking into financial crime to see if like where weird transactions are occur- occurring between stuff. Okay. I will probably do other projects later to expand the focus as as the as our group slowly becomes a, a NGO superpower. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you, so if we need to go look up finance, basically, if you need to go look up financials, uh, you will have by by default, depending upon what you're looking for, you will have a greater effect when you're looking to it. All right, uh, let's write that effect down in the project so we remember it. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, do do do. So let's go to long long term projects. Craft Claudia. We already have. Oh, it. That, that's right. You have it. I just saw that. Um, so benefits, uh, plus effect, um, to, oh, hold on. I got, I gotta, do I do this plus effect? I gotta, I can't just do plus effect because then Excel thinks I'm doing a formula. Yeah, well, that's well, Google doc, whatever, um, plus effect to any research on financial data for, uh, let's call it, um, for uh let's just call it groups yeah let's, let's not necessarily be let's not necessarily be too specific all right so i guess with that uh that's one of your actions hmm i've got to i've got to start another project but i'm just anyone have any ideas before because my first idea is like trying to figure out how to record interdimensional things but i feel like that would be that's too this is too early in the plot to try and go for that right i I would probably shoot that one down at the moment. Yeah, that's what I figured. You should still make them tamper-proof, and I will stand by this. The only thing I could think of would be is, now that Claudia has met her, to actually try and find existing criminal networks in the city, so she can find work. We'll say you should make the drones tamper-proof, not necessarily explode, but you know. I thought they already did explode. No, they don't. No, that was shot down. That was shot down. Not yet, but maybe. Carnival didn't feel like making weapons. Mm-hmm. Maybe They're not after that this kind of drone. Pro- maybe after this project, this next project. But yeah, what were you saying, D- DM? Just have Claudia actually try to find some criminal networks now that she has her little orphanarium network to look around for them. Sure. Yeah. Let's. Why not? Let's let's go ahead and do our next thing of just increasing the Baker Street's wreck. Irregu- sorry, the sidewall to regulars and get them actually involved in criminal activities. <laughs> All right. And then we're just finding out her first, like scouting out and figuring out what's actually there first. You know, so you don't want to step on toes. Uh, so basically, if I would interject, eject and kind of see if I can kind of get where you're going for, uh, from a game, from a stamp, uh, actual like p- mechanical standpoint, um, like maybe give yourself like a, Background, so not only is it plus effect if you're doing it, but also it's not like, necessarily a the I keep on forgetting what the term is for it, but the um condition position, yeah, the position. Okay, so yeah, let's let's establish it. Also, it. maybe even greater effect, or I can think of something else. Or actually, yeah, let let's get it on like uh, give it a pro. The project's still expanding the Steinwall regulars, but it's fo- the effect will be increasing die when like give it one extra die when we go to like do information searches. That way is the effect we'll go for. Okay, uh, I can do that, and then I'll just change this to this, and then uh, from a standpoint of multi- I keep on forgetting how I have to do this. I'm going to push this down to instead of a ten, I'm going to make it a a uh, <laughs> make it a eight. Um, it, so yeah, since we're build, just building on something that's already there. Yeah. Uh, also, you have the thing that you start off with one because it's technically security, quote unquote. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll. Um, I guess in this case, I mean, usually you got to pick which one, but I'm guessing of that case, then actually, probably it'll probably be research because that's what this is. It is research. Um, actually, depending upon what, mm, 
Yeah, this would be. I'll I'll let you pick which one. <laughs> Uh, this, the spirit of this feels much more research than sabotage, so I'll go with that. I was also could say, you could also say deceive or charm could also, you could use those, but also from a mechanical standpoint, doesn't matter. Uh, you have one in that, so, uh, roll your one, uh, that's five. five. So, two more slots. Two more. I'll decide to choose side. There we go. All right, that's, that's yours done. Okay. Uh, DM. Training. Training. Using efficient, efficiency, emotion, and free XP into Bobby physical. All right. Uh, did, did that put them above, uh, f- after a five? Nope. Okay. Uh, then, uh, Torpo. I'm going to be incredibly original and say training. Training? Uh, I'm guessing into, uh... Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, so that is all. There's your downtime, all, all done. Also, uh, because it is a new day, uh, all stress is restored. So up to ten, and oh, I, I hate if I hate how roll twenty does their thing where it's like, oh, they have a thing. Oh, also, I just want to do it there. Regardless, uh, everyone's back to. Stress levels are filled up, um, and uh, yeah, that is that. Um, you all reconvenient. Uh, you now have you are in possession of a new floppy disk that has stuff in it, um, and you just encounter had well, two of you had an encounter with uh, extra planar beings that gave you a. Uh, a name and a number. So, uh, what do you do? Bobby comes into the office last. Oh, yeah. I guess we should say who's here. Yeah, that also. So, who all is there? So, I'm playing as as Elmis, but Claudia is also there just because she delivered the. Oh wait, no. Yeah, yeah I. Yeah. yeah. Considering the nature of this meeting, yeah, it's probably Elmis, Claudia, and Virtue. Yeah, so there's that. Uh, it's Bobby and Safia on my end. Iravia, obviously. Obviously. I can go along. All right, so Ferris is also there. Um, okay, so you all the are at the all office. Here. Okay, so uh, go ahead and figure out what you're doing. So I figure Elmis is, is like fiddling with something that's just... It doesn't actually need any like repairs or stuff. It's just she's very mad. It's like... Okay, so what are we doing with this now? We know that mm. extraplanetary dimensions exist, and we're getting a job for offer from them. I don't, I don't know why you can't see it. I don't Whatever. either, and that's why I'm mad. I think you're the weird Bobby. One Bobby's the last one to show up. He comes into the office, looks around, says, "Ooh, full house. I take it you're meeting more fruit." Yeah. Ferris is asked what he can do to help out. Uh, that's the question, ain't it? So, I personally was gonna follow up on the number and address. Yeah, seems fine. Like, because I can't handle any of that nerd shit. Yeah, I'd like to help the people end of things, because that's kind of my thing. Yeah, I'm stopping by. I'm going to figure out how to make... create... I'm gonna figure out how to save this. It's probably going to kill me, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> Try not to let it do that? Uh, knowing how this stuff works, death will, death is only temporary. <laughs> Please don't become a computer ghost. I don't feel like dealing with that. Look, if if I have my way about it, that'll be at least 50 years from now before that happens. So. I would prefer if it never happens. Bobby raises his hand and says, why don't you all start with th- telling me what happened at your meeting? Real quick, I am blanking really hard. <laughs> uh, so. I, will... I did my recap and everything. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, to clarify, uh, you all had your meeting. Um, you got a, uh, are you, are you talking about in general or specifics? The specifics of the meeting itself. Okay. So you went into the bar and there was bartender who was just a, uh, standard human bartender. I th- well, let me get my ducks in a row. Make sure. Arthur, I believe his name was. Yeah, it was Arthur. I 
did not write down something crude. Wait, he was a dragon. Right. He was a dragon uh, who was a bartender at Lucky's. And he uh, basically said, hey, there are people. Uh, we are trying to um, that uh, there was there. The constellation cults, in particular, some uh, elements of it have been trying to uh, exploit uh, in particular nymphs and sim uh, sylphs, uh, which uh, have connection to their world uh, in such a way that and also trying to just interfere with like their natural like, you know, they're trying to use them, to exploit them. Basically, uh, they were requesting our help because they cannot actually yeah. directly intervene. Yes. Sig uh, Cygnus especially came up. Yeah, and the White Lion. Well, specifically, but, uh, the, the you asked them about the White Lion. They knew who, in general, he was, but also did not really give you any information. Yeah, they gave me the fucking runaround, like usual. Uh, he was, the, what was it, Gorilla Man that I, I am mostly blanking on. Yeah, so there is also another person there who was a ape man who goes by the name... Uh, I just want to double check. I don't think uh, we ever got his name. Yeah. I... I yeah, we got his name the first time we met him. Uh, it was yeah. Herman. Herman specifically. Yeah. Uh, and they basically said, hey, um, if you do end up getting a job that was helping them out, uh, if you come back to them, uh, they will give you a, or I should say, he, he would give you a uh, chance to basically get some extra information in terms of doing an additional favor. Mm. Yeah, Saskia specifically requested knowledge be their payment. Yeah, they would give you, they would find a way to pay you uh, if you were to do a little bit extra. To be fair, it's not like they could give us any item that's item that's meaningful that could actually come with us. At least as of as of that point, yes. Okay. Uh, but yes. Right. So basically, the long and short of it is, we got some buddies not from around here in every sense of the word, asking for some help in regards to constellation cults, which I'm all for anyway, because they're, you know, abusing sylphs, nymphs, anything in between. Uh, so that's that's really the big thing. And a specific one, or just all the cult cults? All the cults was the big thing. Uh, specifically going into it, I yeah, can't remember. Cygnus. It was specifically Cygnus was the big one. Well, also Cygnus, and also because there was... I believe this was, or I God, like I our first went arc it. was when we were, uh, was well the first arc. So that's the thing is that uh, it is not just um, for the for the a reminder. Uh, there are two factions within the uh, constellation cults. You have Olympia and Terra Nova. Uh, Olympia generally is the one that does a little bit more of the shady stuff. Terra Nova is doing weird stuff. But not necessarily like because they are just bending. Maybe they're not doing. They're less. Eth they're less unethical. They're, they're than, relatively harmless comparatively. Yes. Yes. So well, the Terra Nova relatively. is just, so Terra Nova is just regular organized religion versus the Olympia being the one that cult. Yeah, you, you got the weirdos versus the fash essentially. So okay. Yeah. This guy we're working for, is he like for or against these cults? Just so I'm clear. Against. Against. Because they are causing problems for extra planar beings who really... Simps and Nelfs can't really... Nelfs? Nymphs. Can't really do I, a whole lot to defend themselves. And in general, the extra planar beings can't really interfere with us, except the ones who do. Uh, their, their interference is very localized, to say the yeah. least. Uh, whereas this is working after this is a much more macro scale. So yeah, I don't see any issue of us going on to help. That's that's not my larger question. Of is more of like is more of the how and who are we directing at? Mm. I mean, the Olympia is kind of the point. Cygnus being a big one, but there's a few other. What was the name of the cult that was abused? Uh, Orion. Kind of Orion. Yeah. So Orion's another big one. We so got a. Uh, for the for the sake, because I'm trying, I'm keeping track because it's also been a while. It's been um, years. You have met two of the Olympia cults, in particular Orion, which is you met in the very first arc. 
Uh, which no, those the were one the eco terrorists, were... right? Uh, oh, those... Eco fascists. So doomsday fascists. Yeah. Yes, essentially. That's that right. They were accelerationists. That was it. Yeah, they're accelerationists. Yeah, and they were essentially stuffing. Uh, they were essentially stuffing sylphs into robots. Yeah. You briefly had some mention of them in that one arc where you got uh, Ash. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the, the long and short of it is, fuck them. And Cygnus are the white supremacists. Yeah, Cygnus yeah, are... On the occult. Yes, they are essentially... They're neo-Nazis. Well, they, okay. T- terminology is weird. Heads. They're skinheads. Basically heads. skinheads. Anyway, Bobby says, and what are they willing to pay us for our assistance? Information. I requested a trade of information, says Saskia, to which Bobby just kind of looks at the rock, who's sitting on a desk. Mr. Snuffles is elsewhere. Mr. Snuffles is busy eating from the kibble bowl nearby. Sitting in his dog bed that hopefully Aravia bought him last night. Of course! Why would Aravia not? Just so you know, Mr. Snuffles is Aravia's favorite. (laughs) The only one she loves. Basically. (laughs) How could you not? Either way, though. Yeah, uh, information, because it's not like they could give us anything meaningful. They're extra planar. There's not much they could give that would work over here. Yep, that sounds good to me. So, what's our first reason? We're a point of contact is because of me and Saskia, and Saskia's fucking weird. Bobby says, uh, Bobby just looks at her and says, I see. Was there anything else? Did you happen to see, catch on the cameras, the delivery of the key? Yeah, we got it. Uh, her name was at their name was Ash, I think. Yes. Yeah, we got Ash. Some I don't remember if we've met if you've met them or not, but like we've had interactions. Bobby's the one who talked to them. Oh, yes. right. I forgot. But yeah, Bobby, forget, upon that, hearing the... forget that Ash lives here. Yeah, it also, uh, yeah. It was that Ashley was, Merrill I... was the full name. Yes, uh, Ashley Merrill. So this was my unfortunate thing that I did not realize until far too late was the fact that we now have two Ashley. Two, well, we have an Ash in a technical Ashley that's just Ash. <laughs> we decided to call Merrill. Merrill, that's right. Yeah, so Merrill, yes. Oh, yeah. Upon hearing the name Bobby, uh, Merkin says, hmm, well, they just keep popping up, don't they? Seems to. So, I guess if we need someone to hit up first, they're on the list, but I don't think our usual, I don't think we should go to them yet. It's like the Dragon Age character. Huh. Uh, so, yeah. Bobby says, well, that's all, I'm not sure about all that, but if... They're interested in us fighting fitness. I have some good news. He pulls the floppy disk out of his coat. Says, Claudia managed to achieve this last night from the burnt out warehouse that Libra raised. Nice. And he, yeah, yes, she did good work, he says, nodding towards her. All right. So I guess we have a player for it, though, right? So let's just pop it on. As Bobby will hand it to Elmas and says, try not to blow it up, please. It's fine. Just hooks up a projector from one of the drones. <laughs> All right. And I guess what is the well, what does the floppy disk have on it? OK, so let's see how. Hmm. Hmm. I'm de- wondering how. Hmm. Do me a favor and roll a percentage die. Who? Any of us? Uh, yeah, Carnival should be the one to do it. Yeah, I, yeah, Carnival, you do it. I do have a... Okay. Uh, Alright, so you rolled... So, for those playing the home game, uh, percentage die basically is rolling a, one, a D100. Uh, you rolled an 86. Alright, so... Um, in that case, um, this is going to be... Well... Okay, you tell me. So you had the floppy disk. You want to try and deal with it. You go in and you find that it is encrypted. Uh, spe- like you find that there is definitely a lock on it. Uh, you, you see a lot of like you go and see into it. And not only like you can see there is file structure in there. Uh, none of the files are are organized in any particular particularly uh like sensical fashion 
You can tell that someone is trying to obscure something. That's cute. That's real cute. Uh, they think they're good at this. So, in that case, uh, before you even try and poke around with anything, you're going to have to try and decrypt it. I'm All right. Out that interface roll. I'm going to, let's see, yeah, interface. We're going to push. Okay. So, just for the record, you said you were Elmas? Yes, this is Elmas doing this. Okay, let's see. Do, do, do. That's Elmas. four die. Well, hold on. Let me just double check to see what your things are. Um, okay. Uh, hmm. Okay, let me just double check. Nope. Okay, so I'm just, I, okay, so the, hmm, I am, I am debating about, I'm trying to think about, um, how I feel like interpreting the rules regarding some of your engineer skills. Oh, yeah, uh, the heat management. Yeah, because, okay. Because technical, so the technical mechanical lock is like a actual, like an electronic literal lock. So I don't think it quite counts for literal data hacking. That's fair, but I know this uh, absolutely counts. Yeah, that's the thing. So you're going to get, uh, well, yes. Okay, so you're, you say you're going to use uh, interface? Yeah, interface, push, so that's four die. So four die... Uh, in this case, it's dice. But yes, dice is plural. Die is singular. I've had this Forward problem too. Dice. Uh, and let's see. Controlled and guessing. Uh, so it actually is going to. Be, so here's the thing. Um, it is actually going to. It is actually going to be a risky. All right, makes sense. Uh, it's going to be risky, and I guess by by virtue of what you're doing, uh, it's going to be um, in your abilities. It's going to be a great effect. <sighs> yeah, let's call it great. Uh, three, th three, 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 five, 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 five. Uh, so that is going to be a mixed success. Um, so uh, you can either in that case. Uh, uh, what is the consequence before I know that is this what is or not? That is what I want a quick look up to double check what the case is, uh, because I can't really because I got to be a little bit um, where's the mechanics guide. There it is. Got to be a little bit uh, creative with what this means. Uh, where is the consequences of? Oh, does this not list? That's combat. Um, doesn't necessarily. OK, risky. OK, so in this case, you do it. A consequence or complication occurs or you have a reduced effect. We end up in a desperate situation. Um, well, the thing is, you succeed. I mean, by virtue of you have to succeed, like you have to get through. So it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to relock it. Um, and it's also I can't. Hmm. OK, hmm. see, the problem is, is that basically it is you go th through. But what it does some kind of remote ping back to whoever encrypted in the first place. I could do that, but that also. Hmm. But like, I'm just wondering, because yeah. like, I'm going to because like, yeah, I'm still okay. want to I want to resist. It's just like, I don't want to just come up with something and just because I'm going to resist. But like, so uh, let's just say you get through. Um, but as you get through, you notice that it is starting to run. You see that it is starting to run programs like it is definitely doing something after you get through. Okay, let's let's do the resist roll of just uh, basically Elmis is just like, um, mm, mm, let's let's just go and isolate this nice little box into an, its own little thing right here so we can see check this later. But OK, so do a resistance check. Uh, yeah. And you, got, and you got to do it through uh, intellect. Yeah, intellect, which you have three in that, don't you? Yes. Six. OK, so you roll the six. So you. Basically, you see, what happens is you you do your encryption stuff. You try and spend you with ease because of I know this. Um, you get it takes you about five ten minutes to get through their encryption. Uh, as you do that, you start to see that it is starting to run programs on the computer. Uh, in particular, programs that don't exactly look like it is doing something helpful. Uh, you are able to then uh, quick diagnose what's going on. You would notice that it is sending is it is attempting to send pings 
uh, to a particular server. Uh, it does not really specify uh, where that is, but uh, because by the time that you realize what's happening and close it down, uh, it basically closes itself. Like the the thing that would send back just kind of deleted, just cleared itself. Okay, so I did stop it from like getting out there, but I wasn't able to stop it to see where it was sending, right? Correct. Okay. So now that you're in in there, uh, the files are fully there for your uh, like your access. You can see what is in the files. And what you can see is that they're all essentially um, it is a bunch of it is several short messages uh, that are all encrypted in some sort of cipher. Well, good news, bad news. What do you want first? Take the Doesn't bad matter. news first. It's all it's all in a separate cipher. But the good news is we have the full access to this, and I closed and I prevented them from getting their trace back ping before they could know that we got in. So mm. they don't whoever this whoever's this is, they don't know that we're in, but it's got a cipher encryption in the hard files themselves. So we're gonna need to spend some time or find someone else who knows that to before we can really get a good look at these. Do we um, know anyone who can? <laughs> Bobby does. He's not going to tell you so. How uh, does Bibli any use here? Uh, considering you're dealing with just, like, actual computers, no. Oh, I meant the cipher. Uh, oh, well, the cipher is just, like, it's... That's just data manipulation. Like, it's... Oh, then I could take another roll at this thing. Yeah, that's the thing. Oh, okay, it's like, okay, it's, so it's, it's, it's more encryption. It's encryption. Like, okay. it's done in, like, a text... Like, it's, a, well, it, not necessarily a substitution cipher, but it is a... It is like encoded in like an some sort of thing that's making it weird. Okay, I thought it was like done in like another type of encryption that I couldn't just programmatically solve. That's no, it is some sort of like coded language. Okay, that's fine then. Then yeah, no, it's like oh, give me a second, I'll take a try at this. So yeah, oh, another interface. Uh, uh, before you do that, Thakia will speak up and says, "Elmis." Yep. I may be able to help you. Come, wield me. Sure. Picks up the rock. So you feel a surge. And she says, now my knowledge is your knowledge. So now you can use the, now you got my power ability. Oh, so she's on interface as her thing? Yeah. All it's, right. You, you get another point when you're holding her. So we're going to go with interface. And we're going to push again for five dice. Okay, yep. Now you got five die. Uh, do you want to just make it funsies and do a devil's bark? What's the what's the what happens if I fail if the devil's bark? What's the uh, devil's barking? Uh, you get a surge from the rock and you got got I don't even headache. know. I don't even know at this point. I think you probably are just fine with five. Uh, God, what would I even do for a devil's bargain for that? Because like, I mean, the surge of the rock seems fun. Elmus is now tripping out on sure Saskia visions. Sure. Yeah, that would. We'll do that. You'll, you will get a. I will. You know what? I will. Uh, let me take a look at Saskia's list again. He has the Vox. Yeah, that's the thing. Um. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. You are going to be. You were going to get a surge from Saskia. Which? What does that mean? You'll find out. If if you take it. All right. Let's roll six dice. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Also, also what's the position? Uh. In this, in this case, especially now that you've got this, uh, it is. Uh, let's just call this from what you all have. Uh, that's good. That's controlled. Controlled, great. Controlled and great. Six dice. Let's six dice. If you go. fail this, four, four, one, six, four, five. Okay, so you pass. All right. Um. Well, you get wait you for devil's bargain. You get you take it no matter what, right? Yes, I'm still gonna get. I'm gonna get high off of Saskia. So okay, like, so hmm, I you kind of take a look at this, and as you keep on going, like you like are focusing on that, and you two are working together. Um, as you are doing that, um, hmm, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, what would be a fun one to do? What abilities do you have? Let's see. Oh, actually, I just realized you have. Let me check something. No, wait, that's a unique ability. Never mind. I keep on confusing which one's which. Um, 
You, okay, as you do this, you are getting into a trance as you're doing this. Like you're getting, you realize that like, oh, you're getting into your flow of doing this. You start to realize that you're starting to get into a little bit too much of a flow. And as you are doing this and doing encryption, you are almost typing beyond your will. Like you are just kind of going through and what you see, um, uh, you see um, that you are, you get a vision that you are uh, standing in a warehouse. You have, something has knocked you to the ground and sit, you are basically like you've been like, like knocked through, like you've been knocked to the ground by something pretty heavy, by a pretty heavy blow. Uh, and as you look up, uh, you see there standing like you, you kind of take a look and you see ahead of you. You take a look at what knocked you over. Uh, and it is a bipedal creature uh, that you basically to you just looks like a bunch of visual snow. Like it is something that you cannot comprehend what it actually is. You can tell that there is a great force coming from it, but you cannot decipher with your eyes what it actually is. But I see, I see just fine with visual. Not that kind. I don't want to do the neuromancer is the the, <laughs> the sky that's the color of a TV turned to the wrong station or whatever it is. But essentially, it's that <laughs> static. Okay, yeah. It's static. Yeah, yeah, static. Okay, yeah, that's what I was thought. He was just like, oh, it's just it's that thing. It's a static beast. That's like ah uh, ah uh, oh no. It is a being that you cannot, like, decipher, like, how many arms it has or whatever it is. You can just tell that it is standing tall in that just by the shape that it is standing up. So it is just you have been knocked over by some creature and it looks not happy at you. And at this point, uh, it starts to walk towards you. But as it gets closer, the vision ends. You just kind of look to see at what is on the screen. Uh, and you have deciphered um, a number of messages, which I'll just give you the gist of what it is. It is a um, it is mentions of a package uh, that it is in route to some area that has been transferring throughout. Uh, it is mentioned that it is somewhere within the seed bear region. It does not say exactly where uh, that it has gotten close to Steinwald, but not necessarily have reached it. Uh, it is by you can kind of tell as you're going through the files that it is not giving you the entire picture. And it looks like that's intentional so that the entire trail is not held in one item. OK, I relay that to the group while nursing a headache. Saskia from the rock says, what did you see? Giant static thing that was bad. Oh, oh dear. Apparently you just got to fix your eyes. Uh, your your mind's eye, I guess. Uh, also, for the record, uh, because of that vision, uh, you take um, where's my thingy? You take oh, um, did you did you mark down the stress that you were taking from no, uh, doing the pushes? I was, I was gonna do because I know I'm down four stress. Uh, you're uh, so four stress from the pushes. Yeah, two pushes. You're actually, so you're actually down eight stress. OK, because uh, that's a four additional stress for the casting of a foresight spell. All right, that's here we go. Uh, so you, eight additional stress or the total is eight. The total that you lost, you are now at three stress. OK, uh, you are now dazed, uh, which that means you take it. Uh, you are now dazed, which means you take minus one die to um, uh, uh, cunning and intellect rules all right Elmas might be sitting out the rest of this campaign or day at least well at least for now because you can you, you can re- recover rest or cause yeah. stress during a downtime i'm gonna go take a nap just wake me up when we're going to the next spot and just goes to the couch and face plants bobby just watches her go and then looks at the screen and says well then well, at least something came of this so, I suppose y'all want to go meet this mystery person. Thank you for listening to Hazeltown's story. 
If you'd like to get updates on this show and many other shows hosted by me, Lola Puzzlo, you can follow at Hazeltown Story on Twitter. And if you would like to get to know me more from a personal standpoint, you can follow my personal Twitter at Lola DePuzzlo. If you would like to watch this be recorded live, you can go to twitch.tv slash Lola and follow the channel for notifications of when this show, as well as other shows like Retro Rank Rhapsody, are being recorded. If you would like to add this podcast to your podcatcher of choice, you can search for WLDP Hazeltown Radio and find us on most major podcatching search engines. Or you can manually add rss.hazeltown.life to your podcatcher. Thank you for listening, and I hope you come around for the next episode.